Hey, what's up, dude? It's your friend in the neighborhood, Meat Rod. The podcast you're about to enjoy is part of the Low Tree Studios Podcast Network. To enjoy more podcasts like this one, be sure to check out LowTreeStudios.com. Unless you're Sasquatch, then f*** you, Sasquatch. Wreck my podcast! I tried to think of something witty to say about this episode, but then I said, fork it. We watched Mystery Men. Wreck My Podcast! Welcome to Wreck My Podcast, where this week we're covering Mystery Men. I have no idea why. I don't know who recommended this movie, but we did it. And I'm here with my guest. He dresses in the manner of a male prostitute. It's Cam. I do. And also, I have all of the same superpowers as the spleen. Yes, you do. But you're called the pancreas. <laughs> yeah, but after I eat just cheese. I'm just, just yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all yeah. I could see that. I could see that. I'm here with another guest. He loves his Pepsi endorsement. It's Joe. And why am I wearing watermelon on my feet? <laughs> uh, uh, he also talks to his ball, but no one can hear it. It's Craiger. If a watermelon is in a tree, is a tree in the watermelon? Whoa. Is there consent? He's like the Sphinx. <laughs> All right. And then, I, hey, now, I'm an all-star. I'm your host, Jordan. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> we are covering this weird weird freaking movie who why did we watch this was i the one who brought this up or did craig bring this up no you no, i'm pretty no, sure this no, is all you was it all uh, it's I think all someone, your fault i think someone from work mentioned it and i was like hey that's a movie i heard craig mention once before on the podcast let's do it yeah i'm pretty sure you mentioned it before. <laughs> i think Krager. you have too that's like i might have mentioned like oh i was on the tv and i watched like five minutes of it it's very mediocre cool We'll see what you do by putting these terrible, terrible earworms or whatever they are in my brain. Still better than parents. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. All you right. can't even make that claim. You never saw parents. <laughs> he probably didn't finish Mystery Men either, but this one so I wouldn't blame I him about. I actually did. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So let's go into our first segment. <clears throat> it's where Jordan explains the movie quickly so we can get you guys up to speed. I'll explain this movie in about a minute or less, and then that will save you guys two hours of your life. <laughs> Oh, yes, it's time for Jordan to explain the movie quickly. There's a group of wannabe superheroes, but they can't seem to be as effective as Captain Amazing, who is the top-tier crime fighter of the city. That's Champion City. But Captain... Yes, he is. But Captain Amazing needs villains again, so he lets out his old nemesis, Casanova Frankenstein. Great name. Yep, it backfires, and now Captain Amazing is captured, or he's Captain Captured. The wannabes decide to try and save Captain Amazing and recruit a whole big team of weirdo crime fighters. Tons of things that are supposed to be comedy happen. Then there's a (laughs) montage of them training and getting better and getting new weapons. Now they're ready. They break into Casanova Frankenstein's house to get Captain Amazing out, but they kill him by accident because I guess that's funnier. And also, they find out Casanova has a crazy weapon of mass destruction, so now they need to stop that. With the world at risk, they find a new sense of strength and save the day. Um, yeah, I think the, the biggest thing you can take away is the fact that there's supposed to be a bunch of things yeah. comedic happen in this movie, but I'm not quite convinced that that's what this movie is. <clears throat> when did this come out? 1999, which is weird Same to me. Same year as Matrix? Yes. It's weird to me well, that this years, is like... Same Phantom Menace? <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> it, it was just... It was a weird time for movies, I guess. So, this movie was like a spoof on superhero movies before superhero movies were like that popular. I yeah. mean, we had the Batman X- movies and stuff, but like... X-Men came out in 99, right? No, 2000. 2000? Oh, Yeah, wow. so like the big superhero craze didn't start until after this movie, which... Do we have this movie to thank for that i'm saying that this is the catalyst for the superhero movement i think this was finally where people were like you know what superhero movies are so dumb i think we can make them good actually (laughs) after they watch this (laughs) so i have some questions for you guys uh have any of you watched this movie before yes yep yes 
wow, okay, I, I'm i the only one then that never watched this movie before. Which is lucky, because you didn't have to revisit it. No, exactly. I got to experience it all in its graphic, disturbing <laughs> nature right now. Um, when was the last time you guys watched this movie before this last time? Probably 1999. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't remember. I uh, probably had to have been maybe like 11. Okay, okay, so... Um, what did you think of it this time around? Yeah. Ugh. Um, <laughs> that's my review. Just put that. Yeah. <clears throat> One Cam star. Gives it, Cam gives <laughs> it two giant. <laughs> <laughs> One star quote. <laughs> it's like um, that block guy in all of the Mario Party games, whatever those things are called, those thwomps. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my, my review. I mean, I mean, I was all like, is that, um, is that Captain Barbosa? But, like, gold member Captain Barbosa? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Essentially, yes. That's exactly yeah. what it was. I was actually... He was the best part. He yeah. was. I, he was he one was of the two... Pinky. He, yeah, I was going to say he was one of the two parts I laughed at. The pinky got me. I thought that was funny. <laughs> like, the camera <laughs> angle. Which, weird direction in this movie. And we'll talk about that later. Yeah, but weird angles. That was the, one of the only two times I laughed in this whole movie. Joe, what do, what do you think? What did you think of it? Uh, I mean, remember, it is a kids movie. It so, is not. Is a kids it though? Movie. I am pretty sure this is not they, a kids they, movie. He's, this was made for adults. Cussed. This they is. Cuss. There is no way this is made for adults. This is totally made for adults. It's made for. Why adults. did I watch this as a kid? Because <laughs> we, I don't know. I did too. But I yep. didn't go to the theater. I remember I like begged my parents to let me watch it on like a ad blockbuster. I remember I mean, getting the VHS for it. I, yeah. I, guess I mean, I watched true. I watched The Matrix when I was a kid, and that is made for adults as well. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, didn't like it, but there are so many people in this movie. There it's are. just one yeah. big like, cameo uh, fest. Seriously, it's like, hey, it's that guy. Hey, it's that guy. Hey, was that CeeLo Green? That was that was absolutely CeeLo Green. Can we? All right, let's talk about some of the cameos. Like, let's just do it. Tom was, Waits doing in here? Yeah, exactly. That Tom, was weird. Tom, I was I was gonna introduce him as Tom Waits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like if, for those of you that don't know, Tom Waits is like what would you say? Like a folk uh, singer, but also like Johnny Cash folk meets uh, weird music, like banjo, g- trash can banjos. Yeah, and I have stuff. no idea like, what I have heard. He has Tom good Waits. patience. His, oh God, <laughs> damn his, God, um, <laughs> uh, he, he's just, his genre is Tom Waits. Yeah, seriously. It's hard to describe him, but he was, he was the Dr. Heller or whatever in yeah. this. And then we had Dane Cook show up as the walker, yeah. which was like probably at the height of when he was just starting to get really popular. Like right when his like first was comedy pre- special was taken no, was no, I mean, no, like, it was a little bit before like his, oh, okay. uh, some of his bigger well, earlier special. What's funny is I was reading this anecdote that Ben Stiller was talking about on like a, a talk show or something where he said, yeah, we told Dane Cook, hey, come in. You're going to be this character, the waffler. Show up in your own costume. Show up with your own bit. <laughs> it's just going to be like a little cameo thing. And he showed up with like a, a waffle griddle and he's talking like waffle marks on his shirt and he goes, no, we meant for you to be the waffler like you couldn't make up your mind and that was supposed to be the joke. But he took it totally literal. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's kind of funny. Yeah, I kind of like that. But so Dane Cook, like like you said, CeeLo Green was in this. Um, Kel Mitchell from Good Burger yeah. and Keenan and Kel yeah. was a major part in this. Uh, Doug Jones, who shows up all the time in this podcast, was Pencil Man yep. or whatever. Yes. That's Doug Jones. Uh, Paul Rubens as the spleen. This like, yeah. is cracked. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, no, uh, I want a Rubens sandwich. Mike, did you get, notice Michael Bay in there? Michael Bay was the leader of the um, frat boys. He's the one who goes, can oh, we bring our brewskis? That's that Michael Bay. so much sense yep that's Took michael bay out of my mouth with the yep. lethal hazing did you guys see that mark mothersboro was at the beginning uh the guy from devo who does like the rugrats no. song what and did he all do? that he was at the, in the band the leader of the band when they were in that like weird heist thing at the beginning he weird. was there oh, and then the, the red eyes the other weird one was sung kang Get so clear eyes sung kang was that the Susie's, the like I guess some type of Japanese Yakuza like uh, mm-hmm. yeah group. He was the leader of them, and Sun Kang is Han from Fast and Furious. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh, so huh. 
how many weird huh. just like car- like actors are in this movie? It's insane. Also, um, clearly what? in the nineteen ninety and clearly in nineteen ninety nine, furries meant something different. Yes. What is that reference to? Wait, one, 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 one of the, the bad groups, guys. There was the furries. There were they were the furries because they had like the fur like leg oh, warmers. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I they to were, be honest, it was a fembot group. Basically, yeah. To be honest, there were quite a few times where I couldn't really hear what was going on because I was doing other things because <laughs> I got so bored of this movie. <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, obviously we all didn't really like it. Do I even need to ask to wreck our childhood? Because I don't think any of us remembered it as being a good movie. I don't think I watched it as a kid. I think I watched it like as my late teens, early twenties. It's like it was on TV. Honestly, yeah. I think I did enjoy it as a kid. So yes, it did wreck my childhood. Okay. I didn't. I didn't like it when I was little, and I still really don't like it. Yeah, Cam. Cam had taste uh, even back then. Yeah, he, I watched uh, Milo and Otis. Yeah, <laughs> actually, that's not bad. That's a pretty good movie. That's a pretty good movie. I don't, I don't have anything bad to say about. It. All right, no except I meant Irish. to say the entire time, just meant to say Homeward Bound, but said the other <laughs> one. <laughs> um. So. I th- some things I noticed in this movie. I think the, probably the only witty thing they said in the whole movie was about the glasses, like that kind of joke commentary where they're like, "Yeah, he's Lance, whatever. Like he's just wearing glasses, and then he's not." And they're like, "No, there's no way." And it's like that's kind of funny about Clark oh, Kent yeah. and everything. But yeah, that, I mean, that was like the only good superhero joke they made in the whole movie, in my opinion. I like. Well, on that note, I liked when he was like, "Do you know the billionaire Lance?" He's like, "It's me." He's like, "Really?" He's like, "No, I'm just screwing with you." Yeah, always well, want to do that. Always want to do that, and then I think he always wanted to get turned inside out because that's what happened next to him. Mm-hmm. So he became a human Picasso painting, like the Pixar yes, movie. Yes, like, yeah. exactly like the Pixar movie. Yeah, Lewis Black lives inside his head. Did anyone think? <laughs> so when did Idiocracy come out? Two thousand. Uh, okay, when Mystery so Men came out. This movie <laughs> felt like Idiocracy for superheroes, but not done well. <laughs> it, at least Idiocracy, idiocracy is a great yeah, movie. Idiocracy is good, actually, because the satire works. Where yeah. this is like, hey, we're going to satirize something that's already a satirization, and that doesn't really work. No. Isn't yeah, that that'd when be when like trying like, to take isn't space. That when you use heat on a wound, you satirize it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Satirize it. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, so. I felt like it was a little bit weird too because it was mostly like dumb, quirky humor that wasn't very funny until. Which is why I thought it was a kids' movie. Yeah, but then also like it was that way, except for a few moments like when they kill Captain Amazing, and it turns into kind of like dark humor. And I'm like, the, the whoever is directing and writing this movie just doesn't know the idea of tone. No, no there was no tone, no consistency. No. There nothing. Was nothing. You go also, from- Madison Madison brought up a really good point. Um, or not a really good point, but she noticed something that was really cool. She was like, is that the house that they filmed Casper in? Casanova's house? I think, I looked it up, they were filmed on the same set at Universal. I'm pretty sure because Casper's Ca- house. Casper came out like two years before or something. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure they kept that set up for like all these movies in the 90s. And I they would just love used that. it. That's <laughs> like so I'm almost positive that's what it was. That's so good. <laughs> Yeah, it's I so can't funny. find. Uh, it came out in '99, but I also can't find out what what it was rated. PG thirteen. Hey Jordan, Casanova yes. Frankenstein. What else is he in? Uh, he's Barbados in Barbados. Pirates, <laughs> <or> <laughs> what's his name? Not Captain Barbados. Barbosa. Barbosa. Yeah. That's a, Barbados <laughs> is a place. Barbosa is a, place. is a person. Um, he was Captain <laughs> I, Barbosa. I'm in Barbados. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but watching his facial expressions, I know it's not the same actor. You're like, man, that's Keith Richards. No, I kept (laughs) getting Ivan Ooze vibes from him. A little bit. Oh, yeah. A little bit. Because he was doing a French accent. Yeah. Which I didn't understand. His name is uh, Jeffrey Rush, by the way. Yeah. Um, He's in a ton of other stuff, but I only know him as uh, Captain (laughs) Barbadobosa. Barbadobosa. Barbados. I made a Barbados in my new blender. <laughs> Your new blender. All right. Uh, I was going to say this movie feels like a Joel Schumacher version of The Boys. <laughs> a little That's bit, fair. like you know, it felt like it felt like Batman Forever. Of yeah. course, um, the high- Batman Forever alone. Am I right? Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so they love their close-up shots. And they also love weird angles and stuff. Cam, did this just make you like want to vomit as a filmmaker? Yeah. Because like every angle, every shot was just like, okay, I feel like a four year old decided where to place the camera right now. Yeah, it was all over the place. But at the same time, like 
when you read a comic book, there's a million weird angles. Um, but to be fair, I just think that just the movie should have just not existed. Never, never been made. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't blame you. Uh, it's sad too because there's like things that would have been funny in other contexts, like the invisible boy who can only turn invisible when no one's looking. I mean, like yeah. that could have been funny. It didn't work. Mm-mm. The way they played it, just it didn't land. Uh, no. So I just am like the what concept is of happening? Ben Stiller's character is kind of funny, like this like yeah. fake Hulk, you know. Yeah. But like it, eh, one note, everyone was one note. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very blue true. Raja. Oh, he throws forks. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Also, <laughs> like and a spoon occasionally. I yeah. I expected Monsoon more. <laughs> I expected more from Hank Azaria. Like that dude's prolific. Like mm-hmm. he is, especially for like Simpsons fans and stuff. I mean, come on. Like, what are you I doing, mean, man? He at least did a good, like, I don't know, the, the scenes he was in, I think he did good. He does. He did what he does best. He, he does a he, funny he, voice. And yeah. yeah. Did he that. was my favorite character. Yeah. yeah, he was better. Better than Paul Rubens. I mean, come on, that guy is just, he's literally playing, like, greasy peewee that farts. Greasy peewee. When they, he, he's just always peewee. Yeah, that's true. When they first show his character, when he's walking through the diner, there are giant smudges on mm-hmm. the camera lens that make Ugh. it on the film. Really? That is and, so awful. And then when it cuts to the new angle, all those smudges are gone. That, Very that just, <laughs> Yeah, that just shows you right there that they weren't even willing to go back and film a scene when there were smudges on yeah. it. So like, so, like, first AC hands it to the camera op, you know, and they grab that lens, and that camera op was just like... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, no. it's like the camera op was like eating a chocolate donut at the time. <laughs> yeah. When they asked him, hey, can we get a lunch change? He's just like, <laughs> yeah, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, craft services wrecking movies. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so did anyone else feel uncomfortable every time the Sphinx was on the screen? I was like, this isn't even mild racism. I just feel no, like... No, it's like all the way. <laughs> I know that the dude was Native American, but I mean, come on. Yeah, it was just so sensationalized. Like, yeah. It was just like, oh, how do we make white people know he's Native? <laughs> yeah, I, it's not that hard, guys. We can figure it out. It's like uh, like they brought back Sambos or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're about to get a cat butthole shot. Oh, oh no, nice. She didn't, she didn't turn around all the way. Oh, darn. Uh, Did you have a favorite character? Yeah, what were you... Besides Krager, since we know, what are you guys' favorite characters? Huh? Krager, you said yours was Blue Raja. Yeah, mine would be Casanova Frankenstein and the yeah. Bowler. Okay. Yeah. I love the Bowler. The bowler's I love cool. the Bowler. I like yeah, I think, the bowler, oh. I think the Bowler was the best <laughs> out of them all. Um, her dad's cool, too. Yeah, her dad's pretty funny. Yeah, what's... <laughs> Oh, what's his name again? What's his first name? Car- Car- Carmine. Yeah, Carmine the Bowler. <laughs> Carmine Falcone. Yeah. Is that what they were refer? Do you think that's what they were referencing? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, I don't know. I couldn't figure it out. I was trying to He's see, He's sleeping like- with the pins, hey. Hey. Hey, yo. Uh, so the last thing I want to mention here is, like, that super random shot where, like, a skunk is humping the spleen's leg when <laughs> yes! it's, like, this, the moon. That was and weird. I'm like, what is this? Like, who that- decided this? That is a hundred percent proof that this was made in nineteen ninety nine. Yes, that, that weird, so weird fake puppet humping animal was in so many movies. Yeah, there was a props master whose job was probably to design humpy puppets. Yeah, it was pretty much from <laughs> Caddyshack to this movie. That dude just got work for all of that. Yeah, <laughs> just animatronics. He just mastered the hip motion. Yep. Yeah, yeah, humpy puppets. All right, so let's <laughs> let's talk about uh, let's talk about this movie. Some some info about this movie so it came out august 6 1999 almost around almost joe's birthday almost. so yeah what's up craiger oh was, was that a whoop de doo whoop de doo basil not, okay. not about the birthday but about it coming out whoop-de-doo, yeah so basil so 68 68 million dollar budget mm-hmm. that's a lot 30, of millions 33 million worldwide gross. believe it Ooh. totally believe it Oh yeah, awesome. I'm actually surprised it grossed that much. To be honest with you, that's well. Bad. Ben Stiller was still a, a big True. name. I mean, all those guys were essentially big names. Yeah, you mm-hmm. had William H Macy all, in it. Yeah, familiar. I love William H Macy in that. Yeah, kind of made Macy? me lose a little respect. The shoveler in, in the movie. Oh yeah, yeah. Jurassic yeah. Park three was there. Yeah. Does anyone else think William H Macy is uh, Ned Flanders? Just come to life. <laughs> I don't know why I think he's Flanders all the time. He's totally Flanders. Most yeah, Flanders. Yeah, hundred percent. 
Uh, so this was, like I said, mostly filmed on Universal Studio sets, but there was also, I couldn't figure out what scene. It was filmed at the Huntington Library, kind of out by our hometown of Santa Clarita, you know, about an hour away. Um, but I couldn't figure out what scene. Was it maybe the the very beginning, like, weird heist scene? It could have been, only because we were trying to figure out. It looked like it might have been the Majestic. Mm-hmm. It was probably the Huntington Library that they filmed mm-hmm. in. Because it had, like, all the arches and everything. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, guys, I'm a little bit disappointed here with these Rotten Tomato scores. Because I think this is probably one of the worst movies we've watched on this podcast. Uh-huh. And it's nowhere near the worst Rotten Tomato score. Oh, no. It's not the worst movie we've, we've seen. No, I'm not saying it's the worst. I'm saying it's definitely like a contender for top 10. I would would agree with that. Um, 61% critic. What? Yeah, 57% audience. How does it have such a high critic score? It baffles me. I I don't know. We're, I, they must have was this all... like when Roger Ebert had his stroke and he was? They're probably like, <laughs> I give it, and he's like, mm. I think that's I think that's a thumb up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's farts. <laughs> thumb sideways <laughs> goes to the runner. Um, yeah. So I I don't know how the heck they got this high of a, a score. Uh, beats me. But so get this: the director of this movie, yeah, Kinka Usher. Cool, cool. Kinka really Usher. Recogni- uh, recognizable uh, name. Uh, yeah. Uh, you guys want to know what else he's done? Yeah. Um, yeah. He's d- yeah. He did the the boys on Amazon Prime. Yeah. No. Uh, he's done mi- Mystery Men. Believe and it. He's done Mystery Men. <laughs> Believe it. It's the only full length movie he's ever done. <laughs> yeah. He on set there. He said to his actors, "I am so over this. I just want to go back to making my my one minute advertisements." He was a commercial. He was a director. commercials director that they no got for this the, movie. That he for did some all reason. the Pepsi shit. Yeah, I don't. I have no idea why they hired this guy. I have no idea why he took this. Well, you're never going to get a job again after you lose thirty five million dollars. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. I would I would have read this script and gone running the other way if this was my yeah. first full feature length film. Like yeah. it would not have been good. Um, Even so if this you is, read the cast. Well, do you have the cast before you read the script? I feel like normally the director gets the script and signs on before cast members do. Uh, not always, but. In this case, I think that uh, it got greenlit on accident. Yeah, like, I, it, honestly, no this way. is probably a money laundering scheme. Like there was some, there was some <laughs> shady stuff going on with. It. It's like the Foster's freezes in every town. It, yeah, there's no way those are legitimate <laughs> That's businesses. So true. Yeah, yeah, or like a mattress store. Exactly. No one's buying that many mattresses. <laughs> Cologne yeah. kiosks in the mall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this was based off of an actual comic that exists called. The Flaming Carrot and the Mystery Men by Bob Burden. Flaming Carrot is a carrot? really cool name for a thing. Uh, so the Flaming Carrot actually in the comics is the place of Captain Amazing, but they thought that putting the Flaming Carrot would be too weird for this movie, and they needed a s- archetypal Superman-type character, so they changed it to Captain Amazing. But essentially, the Flaming Carrot is Captain the Amazing. guy who Captain Amazing is in the comics. Uh, this movie is super weird. Uh, so this was written by Neil Cuthbert. He's also written Hocus Pocus, okay. which is fine, and Adventures of Pluto Nash, which also kind of oh, tracks no. with, oh, with no. what this movie is. So, um, All right, cast here. We got Ben Stiller plays Roy. We got Will, uh, William H. Macy as the shoveler, and Joe said Jurassic Park 3. He's also in Fargo, <laughs> Boogie Nights. Uh, Hank Azaria plays the Blue Raja. He's known for his roles in The Simpsons. He plays Moe, Chief Wiggum, Friends. Carl. He's in Friends. He's Phoebe's like lover who goes Mike. to Mink, Minx or what, no, his name's David, David. I think. Yeah. He's in the Birdcage. He's in, he oh, is in the Birdcage. Bird yeah. Money. Yeah. Yep. And then the Bowler is played by Janine Garofalo. Uh, she was in Wet Hot American Summer, which is mm-hmm. a great movie uh, that I think is super underrated, but great movie. And then she also voiced a character in Titan A.E., which is a movie that I'm a huge fan of. Great movie. Yeah, I think we covered it on the we podcast did. a long time ago. Yeah, we did. It's an animated film that I believe Joss Whedon was a part of, and uh, it's very sci-fi. But the animation style is like super unique and cool. Dude, I, I yeah. missed that that generation was um it was a uh, El Dorado, uh, mm-hmm. Atlantis, and Atlantis um, is a great movie. I rewatched yeah. Atlantis a few years back, and that was actually held it's up. So good, Prince of Egypt. It's a good. Yeah, yep. she was yep. also Prince, a super oh, Prince prolific. Of Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> she was a super Bible prolific. Feminist comedian. Uh, yes. Uh, she's amazing. Her stuff's yes. so she, good. She was a big part of the Ben Stiller show in the yes. 90s. Uh, there was a Ben Stiller a huge show? Comedian. Yep. Yeah, it, was it was like a sketch, sketch comedy type show. Hmm. Uh-huh. Um, it's a pretty funny show. I've actually never seen... Me either. 
I've seen I've seen I think a scene or two from it, but I've never been able to find it to actually watch it. That's yeah. like the hard part, you know. Um, we have Greg Kinnear played Captain Amazing. He's in Little Miss Sunshine, as good as it gets, and like quite a few other. He's I think he's in a lot of romantic not romantic comedies, but like drama romantic drama type stuff and all that um he kind of shows up a lot but little miss sunshine that movie's amazing he's in that do you not like that movie they just look at Craig stacking cheese it's on his fucking oh my mic. gosh <laughs> he's stacking cheese it's on his mic that's ridiculous um yeah and that's pretty much everyone that was in, in the movie. movie we talked about the cameos the, i think the cameos are probably the best part to be like ooh that guy ooh that guy ooh that girl ooh yeah. that person like yeah. you know so Apart from that, I don't know. I got some fun facts. <laughs> sure. Sure. Hit us with them. It'll probably be the most fun part of the whole experience. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I got to the end of that, and, man, I don't know what I was thinking. Sometimes sometimes this podcast can be a real, real <laughs> crap I think, fest. I think well, I you just got, got, you were all gung-ho about Mr. Man. I'm like, I really? I thought it was going to be good. <laughs> I've never no. seen it. I think I just stood up after watching it, and I went, <sighs> <laughs> I just walked into the other room. I don't think I said anything about you're like, it. You're like, it. if I would have never went to Pocock on that one fateful day that I met Jordan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Even Kate said oh, that was really? terrible. Can Jordan pick better movies? Yeah, sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think what our next movie we're going to cover is. I don't even know. The next thing he's going to say, he's going to be like, oh, Master of Disguise. Yeah, turtle, oh. turtle, turtle. Uh, yeah, I loved that movie so much as a kid. I watched it like five, six years ago. I was like, what what was I doing? Actually, I was going to pick Johnny English, but, uh, you know, we can do oh, Master of the I'm, Sky. I thought, I'm down. No, no, Johnny English. That movie is way better. I thought we were going to do Two Mystery, Two Men. Oh! Yeah. And then do uh, Tokyo Men Drift. <laughs> yeah, really good. <laughs> Moving on. I have on. to say to doing um, uh, Master of the Skies, as they say in Too Fast, Too Furious, Ejecto Cito, cuz! <laughs> God. The fact that you know a line from Too Fast, Too Furious does not bode well. <laughs> get, don't get me started. Dude, oh, my God. Oh, do not watch the Fast and Furious movies with the Coobs. That the first <laughs> yeah, one. that's true. Joe does know uh, all... He, he loves family. Uh, so, here's your... <laughs> and Coronas. Here's your, <laughs> and Coronas, yeah. It's the perfect movie for Joe. <laughs> so, here's our fun facts. What is facts? Baby, they're fun. They're fun. Oh, yeah. What is facts? Baby, they're fun. They're fun. Oh, yeah. Um, According to Ben Stiller in an interview on The Late Show with David Letterman in 1993. Wait. 93, that was six years before the movie came out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so scratch that year. Just He was on The Late Show, I guess. And he said him and Greg Kinnear got into a heated argument on the set, and afterwards Stiller tried to get released from the film because he was so pissed at him. Hmm. Or he just realized what kind of movie he was in. Yeah. He was trying to get fired. Uh, so the bowler's skull ball was a custom ball made by um, a manufacturer called Ebonite. Mm-hmm. And after the release of this movie, they made a less detailed version of the Skull Ball as part of their super fun ball line. Remember when bowl, remember when uh, swing music and bowling was really huge for a hot minute there in the 90s? Yeah, and also what a stupid fucking name for yeah. a ball line. Super fun ball. <laughs> uh, stupid name for a line of bowling balls. Sounds like it'd be a fun video game on the Nintendo Switch. Oh, yeah. Super or, fun or, ball. Or like Super Monkey yeah. Ball. Yeah. yeah. Super Monkey Ball. That yeah, exactly. game was dope. I love bowling, by the way. Oh, I'm a huge fan of bowling, too. I'm really bad at it, but I like going. I'm mediocre. Yeah. I throw I, the ball as hard as I can every time, and I don't aim. Um, yeah. I, I feel like I'm okay. I feel like I could hit, like, over 150 in a game, which is, I know that's only half the points, but, like, that's not terrible. Dude, I that's barely break, like, 70. Yeah, so, so yeah, there you go. If you, play okay. bowl, if, you bowl, if you bowl once or twice a year and can get over 100 easily, then that's pretty good. Okay, in all honesty, though, Cam doesn't even aim for the pins. He just tries to throw the ball down the lane as fast as physically possible. That's true. And That's check true. the miles per hour on and like, and like, <laughs> And like all things in life, I take it way too seriously. <laughs> I take the miles per hour part seriously. What the fuck was that? Gotta go fast. Uh, you do have cats, Cam. I'm sure they just knock something over. He has uh, a cat scan in there? Oh, God. <laughs> it's a nice Did I place. not put the cat food away? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The cats are getting into the food. The cat's out of the bag now. Okay, so in 2000... God damn it. In I'm going to go. Yeah, go get, go get your cats. 
In 2011, an interview with AV Club, Hank Azaria claimed that during production, Kinka Usher declared, I'm going back. Oh, I already told you guys this one. Yeah. See, this is, this, this, this is when I don't have a lot of content, this is what happens. Um, a number of the sets used in this film are the same sets used in Batman Forever. Which makes sense. You tracks. called it. Yeah, tracks. Uh, Invisible Boy is the only member of the team who has no comic book counterpart. So they just wanted yeah. to throw Kel Mitchell in there. I guess like, he probably just let Kel figure out like a character for himself, and he probably came up with that. He does love orange soda. He does. Uh, the he Mystery Men. <laughs> I'm like enamored with uh, the Leaning Tower of Cheez Its right now. <laughs> Are we doing video? It's the Leaning yet? Tower no. of Cheez. Oh my god! Why am I? I even wish doing we had. This? I know. I wish we had video of this episode. That would be that funny. makes Krager the cheese guy from uh, the Goofy movie. Yeah, Tower of Jesus. Jesus. He's Polly Shore. Uh, so the Mystery Men were the supporting cast of an underground superhero comic book called Flaming Carrot. As I said, uh, Mister Furious and the Shoveler were the only ones from the comic to make it into the movie. No one else so, was actually in the comic. Nope. Well, yeah, I, no one else. I guess no one else was in the comic. No. Can Even you- though they <laughs> said that the Bubble Boy, the Invisible Boy, was the only one who didn't make it. Those are conflicting fun facts right there. Seriously. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, so, IMDb. <laughs> roughly based on a comic book then? Yeah. We I, grabbed two characters. Comic book. Yeah, a quote unquote comic book. Um, when the blue Raja sits on the fork, he shouts, Clavin, which is the catchphrase of Professor Frank from The Simpsons, whom he voices. Hmm. Oh. There That's you go. Cool. Yeah. There's an, okay, so here we go. There's an urban legend. As yet not fully disproven, that Tim Burton secretly directed this film, and they used Kinka Usher as a cover story because it was so bad. No, I don't buy it. Because they said the reason they think is the the casting, particularly Paul Rubin, Rubens, hmm. and there's also animation from Henry Selick, which is another big Tim Burton person, and... The warping death of Greg Kinnear's character looks a lot like things Tim Burton would do, too. Mm-hmm. There are so there's things enough. in there that I could see the comparison. I don't think it's stylized enough for his takes. So. Not even Me close. neither. Yeah, I don't think it's stylized. I think it's just a sad like representation. Someone trying to copy it really is yeah. all, all it was. Um, the final thing I have here is there's a statement in the closing credits that says, Dockers khakis are the official khakis of Champion City. Really? Yeah, uh, well, no, I didn't stick around. He was an advertisement, dude. Yeah, I didn't stick around long enough to read the credits. I barely stuck around long enough for like the end of the movie. So, yeah, that's that's the movie. Oh man, this is gonna be a shorter episode. We just saved you all. Yeah, we saved it. you all two hours of watching this movie. Cam, we're pretty much just wrapping it up because. Uh, oh, I cool. I don't. Have, I don't have anything else to say about it. <laughs> I know this movie was uh, not good. This movie was uh, bad. And this mm-hmm. movie could have been better. <laughs> All yeah. things that are the same thing. I agree. I'm going to be far more entertained right now just watching Corey eat dinner. Yeah. Like, the regular style human stuff. I'm going to be like, wow, this is so much better mm-hmm. and more entertaining than Mystery Man. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. And you can still so, pull your finger. Oh, yeah. Oh, Chipotle. It'll, it'll be the <laughs> spleen afterwards. Uh, so, uh, hey, listeners, write in. Let us know what you want us to watch. Give us a good suggestion. Give us something interesting. Please. Not mystery men. Not monkey. Just uh, one, one movie. I know. We really one okay. Fucking movie. <laughs> let's 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 do this. Let's get a um. Let's do like a series coming up. Let's do the Kill Bills. Mm, let's do. <laughs> let's do. We were well. We we're supposed to do a Nicolas Cage series. Oh yeah, fuck it, dude. Let's do. Yeah. Uh, let's watch. Oh man, I don't. You're know. Raising Arizona. <laughs> or Rise of the Phoenix. Whatever it's called. Uh, can we watch it. that new movie, Jiu-Jitsu? I just, I just want to watch it, and I want a reason to watch it. Well, now that Mortal Kombat's out, I think that's like the more legit version of Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> have, you all, have you all watched it? No, not yet. No? No. Have that you? Be the I show have. is my I life. I have seen it. Mm. Well, I'm going to watch it soon. Have but... you finally seen Kong vs. Godzilla? Oh, yeah. I, I thoroughly enjoyed Cam, it. Can you and finally I was a... ask your question? Yeah, he why asked the fuck me. does King Kong have a battle axe? Yeah, he asked me. And I, I explained that it was ancient times when the and it Kongs... still it made, his his description still made no sense. I don't understand why John Monkey has an axe. Still don't get it. Well, the thing is, your question was, you're like, well, did they ever talk about this in the movies? And to answer that, no. 
<laughs> yeah. just... well, I gotta say, like, I, this is not my King Kong. My King Kong kidnaps white women. Like, not yes. swings around an axe. And like. on that wreck my- <laughs> On that note, uh, <laughs> check us out next week. No, go go give us a rating or a review. If you give us a review, we'll give you a sticker. We're really appreciative of all that. Uh, we're really appreciative of anyone who listened to this episode. Probably lost all we're of our sorry. fans. Probably lost all of our fans in India, which luckily aren't that many. Um, so, uh, <laughs> if any, <laughs> if any, so uh, go to wreckmypodcast.com. You can find our Patreon there. You can find our Redbubble store. And you can find our Instagram there. It's our one-stop shop. You can also find better episodes there than this one. <laughs> so go check that out. Go check out YouTube. We're eventually going to get back to video, but right now we're kind of just doing audio only. But we're still putting them up on YouTube. And uh, tune in next week where I think that we're going to be doing a – either next week is going to be our Elite Eight Showdown episode. Okay. Or an Around Around Table. I so don't if know you want to hear one. something even worse than this week. Yes. <laughs> Tune in next week. For yeah. The Elite yeah. Eight showdown. <laughs> On that note, I'll fork you later. Yeah, bye, bye. I love you. I uh, like and I love you all. Um, the line from the movie. Wreck my podcast. I like and I love you all. Um, the line from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, here, let's let's jail slate real quick. One, two, three. Cam, do you want to stick on for Patreon or, or no? No, I got to eat my Chipotle and go to bed. Yeah, uh, I, we're going to talk about Falcon and Winter Soldier anyway. I don't know if you Ooh. finished I'm it. not all the way caught up. I'm not so. even caught up either. I'm only on oh. episode three. Or I just finished episode three. I finished. Ah, oh, damn. Well, then we so, can't do that. Well, if you guys just want to talk it amongst you two, I mean. No. We can... Nah, I think we'll just not give them Patreon content <laughs> Bye, guys. Uh, See ya. Uh, Enjoy uh, your Cam, your if you want yeah. something else animated to watch, it's also on Amazon. It's called yeah. Undone. Yeah? It's interesting. It's really, it's pretty good, but the animation style is really creative. I, Sick. I, I'll check I it like out. I like their ideas. Yeah, Corey and I will watch the trailer. It's got a, well, who's the uh, the guy who plays Saul in a... Paul Bo- Bo- Yeah. Jason Bateman. <laughs> <laughs> want it tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> what is even happening tomorrow? The NFL the draft. NFL draft, you ugly oh. swine. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. Uh, I no, mean, I, I didn't know the Oscars the- happened last weekend either, so apparently I just I think, don't know I think things. the Broncos are in a pretty good position, Cam. I do too. I mean, now, now that they got, like, Bridgewater, I'm like, will they still take a quarterback? No one knows. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Bridgewater's cool, but I like Tunnel Moss a little bit more. Dumb. I'm more a fan Dumb. of Bridge. I'm more, fa- Dumb. I'm more fan of Bridgeport. <laughs> That's going along with my weird Mars comments. <laughs> Jordan, have you watched Invincible yet? Nope. Idiot, watch it. It's amazing. It's I so good. The new, the like, the latest episode. I was like, we, oh shoot, I can't wait for the next one. I realized yeah, I'm really it. bad it's at good. watching. I'm really bad at watching things that people tell me to. Like, I haven't watched Tiny Furniture yet. <laughs> well, also, you do not need to watch Tiny Furniture. Yo, you were all about me watching furniture? that. <laughs> it's all. It's just mumblecore. Remember, remember. I said I never liked that, it. But that's it mumble hardcore. In case you were wondering. Yeah, it's people mumbling during a breakdown. It's amazing. <laughs> All right, let's hit it. Let's hit it. I got Chip- okay. I got Chipotle on my way. All right, cool. Hey, let's do the clap real quick. One, two, three. Gonorrhea. <laughs> God. Okay. Um, Craiger, bring your mic a little bit closer to you. Except towards your face. Good lord. Okay, let's start speed it up, bro. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Okay. And then, better? Cam, try and keep an equal distance every time you're talking okay. tonight. Okay, cool. Um, actually, also bring your mic a little bit closer because if I have to boost yeah, you, I'm going to get all the background noise. So, you're talking pretty quiet, Cam. Just lean into that microphone when you talk. All right, cool. Um, Dude, I'm loving the fro. <laughs> it's not even really a fro. It's just that I just, just woke up from a nap. <laughs> ah, no shit nap fro. All right, I'm going to do the intro real quick.
place called Champion City. The forces of good and evil. Captain America, what a surprise. Are about to collide. Well, we've always been each other's greatest nemesis. 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 Now, with the city's one true hero missing... Captain Amazing is in danger. Kaboom! Who will step forward... You again, wannabes. ...to answer the call of justice? Don't mess with the volcano, my man, because I will go Pompeii on your butt. <laughs> oh, my golly. They've been waiting for this moment. The city's in peril, Lucille. All of their lives. Butch needs his vest back. Well, it's my vest, too. I bought it for him. But now that their time has come... I'm a superhero, too. What's his power? Excuse me. They're going to need all the help they can get. You gotta find a lot of superheroes really quickly. State your name and power. PMS Avenger. I only work four days a month. Is there a problem with that? No. No. I... And the waffler. Waffle man! Am I too late to try out? Sorry. <laughs> You're in. Wow, my first mission, and we're gonna rescue Captain Amazing. Here we go. Universal Pictures presents. We need to talk about your plans. I'm going to kill you. Right, that's the part that really doesn't work for me. A new league of heroes that step to a different beat. Well, I am a ticking time bomb of fury. I don't find you threatening at all. <laughs> Let's do some carnage. We're not your classic heroes. We're the other guys. Mystery Men. I'm invisible! Can you see me? Yes. yes. Wow. Maybe you should put some shorts on or something if you want to keep fighting evil today.